What's up guys, back in today with another reaction to the Berserk manga, this time with volume 28, uh, the chapters Familiars and Supernatural Fog. Um, last time out we actually met a weird little kid, um, we had a meeting with Skull Knight who told us some information. Had uh, some lovely moments with Shirker and Guts as well again, keeping up the kind of cute moments. Um, unfortunately her little elf has got <laughs> the wrong idea, but um, yeah, Skull Knight actually gave us a bit of hope last time. Letting us know that it might actually be possible to retrieve Casca's memory and bring her back to who she was, but it depends on exactly if uh, if she wants to return that way. Which again, I'm not sure I fully agree with. How could how could she? It's, it's interesting because she's a she is a different person now. But how could? She, it seems a bit weird that <laughs> she wouldn't allow herself to return to who she originally was. But I don't know. I do, I, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a situation, isn't it? So yeah, he gave us that hope, and then he almost instantly kind of ripped out of our hands, <laughs> saying that she might not, she might not want to return. And uh, that seems to be what's on Guts' mind right now, of course. But yeah, we ended up meeting this weird little kid, who probably adds even more fuel to that fire of her probably not wanting to go through whatever it must take to return her memory and such. Yeah, she uh, already got quite attached to this kid. Remember this little look right here. <laughs> and I, I, there was a comment about this. I also feel really bad for Guts. I mean, I know he's done wrong and such. But I still feel really bad for him receiving these looks and such and being treated so... so uh, I wouldn't say poorly because, again, it is kind of warranted from her perspective. But being treated harshly from someone that loves you so much and has done so much for her, it, it, you just feel terrible about it, don't you? Yeah, we all we ended up with this little kid actually playing with guts a little bit here, or getting ripped away from Casca in these very, very fan servicey scenes here. <laughs> very fan servicey. Let's see. Yeah, uh, just thinking about the little demon kid who's still within Griffith. Yeah, we ended off with the, the crocodiles coming, so uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what we've got today. Let me know what you guys think about these chapters down in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy, and subscribe to the channel if you do want to keep up to date with these reactions. And let's get into familiars. So I've been reading quite a bit of manga recently. Um, obviously, I'm just keeping berserk for the videos, but I've been reading a bit of Umineko in my own time. I uh, did actually read slash... I didn't play, but I watched YouTube videos of um, playthrough of Umineko... Parts one through four. I watched the anime as well, which was pretty good actually. But um, apparently, it's not like a, a full adaptation or whatever. But yeah, I started reading that because I actually want to finish it. And the uh, the visual novel videos I was watching on YouTube are just too long, unfortunately. Just too long. Yeah. Bog coming over here now, is it? So, is this, so this Dread Emperor, I guess, and he just travels wherever his fog travels. At the, at, when we last saw him, it was kind of focused in, in this kingdom. So um, I'm guessing he's kind of expanding so he can search for Charlotte and Griffith and such. And it seems like he's followed by demons as well. Bog. These elves are so cute, aren't they? Guts? What is it? <laughs> you know what? Puck's a little bit of a... Uh, what, what do you call those things? Those um, sleeping masks. It's a fucking crocodile. Something's coming. Oh, it's a bunch. And they've got spears. <laughs> that is quite funny, isn't it? Something's coming. Hidden in the fog. Fun. It's been a while since we saw any action. The usual wraiths, perhaps? The talismans are flawless. That should not be possible. Yeah, this has nothing to do with the uh, the brand, is it? 
they just happen to come across this place and are expect inspecting it and such. This odd is closer to the monsters who attack the mansion of the spirit tree than to this wraiths. Than to wraiths, sorry. I don't really know what a wraith is. Uh, there's a wraith in 13 Ghosts, if you guys have ever seen that movie with Matthew Lillard. Pretty good movie. I used to like that as a kid. Didn't hold up quite as well on my last rewatch, but um, it's, a, it's like a type of ghost, ghost I think. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. A ghost or ghost-like image of someone, especially one seen shortly before or after their death. So here it just says it's a ghost, but I think there's a bit more to it, otherwise they'd just call it a ghost, right? A wisp or faint trace of something. So I guess it's just like a bit of a weaker ghost or something. As I said, I feel like there's more to that explanation than what Google gave me there. Because, uh, again, I've heard that in specific cases of ghosts, rather than just to, just to talk about a ghost. It does feel like apostles. Here they come. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Why hello there? <laughs> this is uh this is the image a, a normal person gets when they see a um oh, what's that thing called? I can't remember. Those annoying people you'd always get at your door. I haven't had any. Uh, uh, yeah, I haven't had any at my door for years. Um, I'm forgetting what the name of their kind of thing is, but um, there's religious people that come knocking on your door. This is what they are, in the form of a human. <laughs> They're a big monster. Fuck it out. Got a huge old chompers through your door. Eee! Do What's this friggin' huge lizard? A dragon? No, this is a crocodile. An animal from a foreign land. I'm not sure we have crocodiles and such in the UK. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of any crocodiles in the UK, but I could be wrong about that. Not sure it's possible. No, no, there's none in European waters in general, which I guess makes sense for Berserk. That's why I did Google it. I know Berserk isn't specifically set in the UK or England or anything. It is a bit of an amalgamation of European kind of countries and such, but there is a lot of UK and England parts in Berserk for sure. As well as Spanish and... Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of Spanish as well. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> well, I don't think they're that, that, that bad. I mean, obviously they're dangerous, but don't be stupid. So most animals. Whoop. Oh yeah, we already done that. It just stands up. It stood up. Crocodiles are crazy. What? It's got a damn harpoon too. <laughs> what? What? Have you guys seen any crocodile movies? I feel like I've only seen Lake Placid, and that's it. I haven't seen too many others. Lake Placid was Lake Placid was pretty decent. I um, don't remember too much of it because I watched it at my cousin's one time when I was younger. I don't remember it being all too scary, even as a kid. I think that's about like a giant crocodile. I yeah, don't remember too much of it. I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm, I'm alright with monster movies. I'm not the biggest fan of 
I'm not the biggest fan of them. Can't name too many that I really love or anything. Most of the ones that do have monsters like aliens, which are aliens of course and such, are not too much of a, I don't know, they, they feel a bit more like slasher movies and kind of a little bit different to the usual kind of monster movie like a Godzilla or something. We'll say um, one of my favourites probably would be Cloverfield. I really like Clo 10 Cloverfield Lane as well, that was a great movie which was really different um, than Cloverfield. But I uh, quite like that, especially for being kind of found footagey. Ah. Oh shit. Cedro almost got chomped. That giant paw in the back. Fucking hell. Imagine getting slapped by that thing. <laughs> Literally sitting in his mouth. What in the world? Look at Puck's just like disappointment looking at him. Straight in the face. What are you fucking doing? My body pillow. <laughs> My human body pillow, a sea drove. Almost gone chomped. This was produced by some kind of spirit dwelling in the animal. A magical life form. A kind of so-called familiar. But just who would? This is a familiar, hey? Interesting. I've always accustomed that to like vampires and I think... Um, I forget exactly what the definition was actually. I remember hearing a definition not too long ago about it being like a... A form that kind of dwells upon like the master's form or something along those lines. I can't remember. Familiar spirit. A demon supposedly attending or obeying a witch slash wizard, wizard or demon in this case. Obeying and attending to a demon. Often said to assume the form of an animal. Yeah. I think I was pretty close. But yeah, it's always in service to a kind of higher being or master. And like I said, I feel like it might have been um, the recent Nick Cage um, vampire movie. I forget what it's called now. But it might have been that that explained it a little bit. Um, where in that one, it 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 he kind of um, they would usually grant this kind of power and such and. It'd be in exchange for their service. 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 <laughs> we have trouble. I'll swore with them. Yeah, these guys aren't going about things carefully, are they? Well, they are going about things carefully, but they're not. These, these crocs aren't going about things in a nice manner. They're just ram, ramming down everything and looking for Griffith and Charlotte. No heed to anyone else's well-being. Is in line with the Dread Emperor, of course. Ivalira, you got it. Scar rune. Tonight is a full moon. We're turning to werewolves. The time when the power of magic is most is most manifest. Even though this is not a church or holy ground, I can still affix the formation of the four kings. Please buy me a little time until the completion of the spell. Full Moon's getting my blood going too. Barneys, please see to Casca and the child. Keep it together now, servant. Y yes, ma'am. Ooh. This is almost like a, a half-drawn pentagram, right there. So she's going to be possessed again.
Scott's gearing up. Oh, he's doing that trick again. We haven't seen this for a long time. When was it we last saw this? I can't remember, to be honest. But it was a long time ago. Tying his hand to his sword. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't actually use the power of the, the suit here. I don't think he needs to. Okay. Guts. In your shape. You're still... Just leave it to the other two. I'm fine. This will be perfect for getting back into practice. Though, like you haven't had enough. A full moon is also when a person's mind is most unhinged. Be extra cautious. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the uh, song I'm listening to right now is an absolute banger. It's the uh, new opening for Undead Unluck. I absolutely love that song. Love that artist in general. I haven't heard, I've only heard, ever heard two of their songs. One from Dororo or Dororo um, and one from Undead Unluck. But both of them are absolute bangers. Couldn't get outside if you wanted to. There's so many. But I think it's feeding time. Be careful feeding the Crocs to Cedro. He throws his little... Uh, Berries. <laughs> Super effective berries. Sweet, they burst open. As good as bombs. Full moon limited time magic blowout. <laughs> Here comes Serbic over his wind sword. Looks like more and more we see him, the more he does get more out of it, doesn't it? What are these called again? The sylphs. The wind sylphs. It, he flew. Like laundry dancing on the wind. <laughs> you know what? Kind of true. Like your laundry getting fucking blown away. True. It does seem to function better than usual. Oh damn, nice. Yeah, it sure does. How clean those cuts are. You know what? Could we eat these? <laughs> I think we've already had dinner to be fair, but could you could you eat these crocs? It should be fine, right? It tastes a bit demony. But I say after we're done with this, so we have a little bit of croc stew. Ah. Darn, my style of swordplay. Insta kill? <laughs> Yo! Feel like the rolls, you're, you're going to get outrolled by a crocodile. The crocodiles do their rolls as well, and they can probably do them better than you, Cedro. Bastard! It read my moves! Fear the crocodile. Nah. You roll towards its mouth. It's got a low posture to begin with. You might as well have been bait rolling. First hit it with magic berries, then attack after it fin after it flinches. Too many details. <laughs> two. Two instructions. Throw berry attack. Bit too much for Mr. Cedro. No rolls. We can't comprehend no combat rolls. That's a special attack right here. Yeah, unfortunately, but they've also got a bit of a ranged attack, unfortunately. Which is a, a crocodile's main weakness, isn't it? Getting behind it and being far away. But they're pretty fast little buggers. They're pretty easy to maneuver around. Like I said, you just got to not be stupid. I don't think you'll f fill its stomach, though. You're just bite-sized. Ah, fine then. Berry flick, combat roll, 
Slice. I feel like his special weapon would be pretty good here. They got some, yeah, here it is. They got some pretty tough skin crocs, so oh, this would be a very good weapon to use against them. Although, super close range, which is unfortunate. That's what's super, super unfortunate about his weapon in general, isn't it? He's not great close range, as he says. So it's a bit of a shame you've got a weapon that specializes in super close range. We'll see how he kind of maneuvers around that, though. We've already seen some improvements with the combat role and such. And looks like he's actually getting some bad experience with Huck leading him. Hey, don't stop. Move. Close one. Repeat not the same mistake. So who's he meant to be this time? Old man Yoda. Repeat not the same mistake. I feel like it would be the same mistake, repeat not. That was Yoda. So who's he referencing here then? There's probably plenty of old fucking senseis. He could be referencing there. <laughs> You're really acting like a master today. He is, and he's got some good advice, little puck, hasn't he? Right, so like that. And there's a lot of them. They're slower, they're slower than trolls, but bigger and tougher. This could be a problem. Cape. Takes over the scenery. It does seem a bit all over the place, this cape, doesn't it? Not, it's not as smooth and as kind of flowing as it... It's flowing, but... Not quite again as smooth as it usually would be. It's, it's, like I said, the cape's a little bit all over the place, isn't it? Looks a bit messy. Frailed at the ends. Not even. A bit chaotic. Yeah, we don't need this armor. <laughs> but I don't think mean these crocs are anything too special, are they? It's also it's almost a bit reminiscent of Guts from the early stages of the manga, honestly, with Guts in this kind of sleeker shape, isn't it? Quite as thick. Well, it's like he totally recovered. But, yeah. Strain. <laughs> All right. Are you a demon, kid? Are you a demon or something? What What are you here for? It's like big eyes. Hello. In anime and Japanese culture in general, they all have big eyes, which I find quite interesting because the usual kind of uh, propaganda against the Asians is that they've all got small eyes. Is that why they, all their media has such such big eyes with their characters? Intriguing, isn't it? But yeah, let's, uh, let's read some comments quickly. This guy's saying, please kill the child first. I'm guessing other people think that there's something sus about this child. I mean... I mean, the way we met him was super suspect. So who knows? Why are people still saying that this is Casker and Guts' child? <laughs> it's just not true, is it? I mean, this person here is being super aggressive. Goofy for real. Like that panel with him and Casca catching the child at the same time should have been the biggest hint. You have to be blind in the brain in order 
for that to slip past you that this is Cusca and Guts' child. Like I said, is Casca and Guts' child not the demon fetus that the who the the Behelet man ate and is now part of Griffith? Like, is, they didn't have two kids, did they? They didn't have two kids. So I, it doesn't make sense that this would be Guts and Casca's kid, does it? It just doesn't make sense. I'm not sure why this person is speaking so confidently. Like, yes, it looks a lot like Casca. Seems to be attached to Guts and Casca. We had that very fan service -y scene of them looking like a family. And if you just saw that image, you could very much say that they were all related and family. But like I said, I mean, am I being, am I being stupid here? <laughs> it's just not that good, is it? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see who the uh, who's blind in the brain, I guess. Sorry, I'm just still reading the comments. That is the demonic child of Casca and Griffith. No, it's not. It's not, though, is it? Maybe, maybe I'm not sure how this would happen, but maybe Griffith got rid of that part of himself? That part that he found during the meeting with Guts? He got part of that stuff inside of him, and this is what came out? I wouldn't have thought that would be the case. I very much doubt that happened. I'm not sure how that would even... Be possible. Um, people seem to be really certain that this is their kid, and I, I really don't feel so. All right. The story said that it's Guts and Casca's child. Oh, they're talking about the, the demon fetus. <laughs> Seems a pretty contentious point <laughs> is what I'm picking up here. You know, this kid reminds me a lot of the kid in Full Metal Alchemist 2009, which if you've read the manga or watched Brotherhood, you really won't be familiar with, but it's actually one of my favourite parts of 2009, and I almost do prefer 2009 in some ways, in quite a few ways actually. It's, much, it's more nostalgic for me, first of all, so I prefer it in that manner. But, um, yeah, I think it's Wrath. It's actually the form of Wrath in 2000 and... No, Wrath is Bride from Brotherhood. So uh, Bradley is Wrath in, in the 2000s one and he's Pride in... Uh, I think anyway, I can't remember. Might be Wrath and both, I can't, I can't exactly remember. Um, is it Pride? No. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember his name whatsoever. <laughs> uh, that was 2003. Sloth? No, Sloth is, spoiler, uh, well, that's been out for 20 years, Edward's mother. 
which is another change I really like. One of my favourite parts of, uh, of the 2000s. Uh, it's not MV. MV is just MV. Um, I'm struggling to think of the other sins now. You're typing kid. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Oh, it is Wrath. I was right. I thought it was. I think Wrath is this kid in this version, and Pride is uh, Pride is Bradley, not his son. But yeah, I really like this kid. It reminds me a lot of him. This baby, long black hair, very childlike. Of course, looks a lot alike. If this was animated, it probably they'd almost probably look exactly the same. But um, yeah, this kid is super interesting. Again, spoilers here, but he was born from uh, Edward's Izumi. Yeah, her name's Izumi. Edward's master Izumi. Um, she, he was actually born from. He's a homunculus born from her dead baby, and uh, yeah, it's pretty dark. <laughs> like I said, though, I really like the changes and where they went with that anime original kind of ending. Honestly. I will say Brotherhood is superior, but um, yeah, I just prefer that version. But yeah, definitely a contentious character, this little kid at the minute, isn't he? Fucking hell, this this one's got a lot of likes. This chapter here, it's got almost double the last chapter. I can't I can only imagine some of Big's going to get revealed here or something. But here we go, supernatural folk to finish off for today. Taken down Crocs. <laughs> I'd love to see that anime, just these little croc arms, because they're so tiny and measly, aren't they? Although, again, powerful in the fact that these crocs can move fast. They just look a bit funny, don't they? Like T Rex arms. I couldn't imagine them getting too much power on a throw, but like I did say, they do run pretty fast and attack pretty fast and have a spring to their step, so maybe I'm wrong about that. I always do find it funny the image of a if you see if you T Rex kind of falling over, they're trying to like put put their arms up <laughs> so they can push themselves back up, but their arms don't even reach halfway to the ground. They just fall on their snout. Uh, just taken down Crocs left, right, and center. I feel it. It's sniffing it. It's sniffing. Sorry, it's sniffing the scent of blood. It's aiming for a chance to be released. Little fucker. Don't yield your mind to it. Keep your head cool. Draw out the minimum power of the armor. Only control the pain enough to move freely. The one holding the reins is me. I like this little cut right here. I like stuff like that. Uh, again, funny enough, I brought up 13 ghosts. There's one in 13 ghosts of a, of a guy getting split in half from a, uh, a glass door. And it's, yeah, it's nasty. Anything with Matthew Lillard in I usually quite like. I'm looking forward to Five Nights at Freddy's, even though I've never played the games or anything. Looking forward to that. Hurry. Hurry. Yay. Here, here, here's one here. <laughs> what are the men doing? Do something, you. Turn it into a bag of crocodile hide. <laughs> Have we learned that much yet? I feel like we haven't. What is the bet this kid is going to do something extremely, again, the light count. This kid is just going to use Femto's powers and squish it into a ball. Look at this. I mean, this right here is telling me something's going on. They're looking exactly straight at each other right here. No fear in this kid whatsoever, by the way. 
I did mention that earlier when he met Guts, there didn't seem to be too much fear. You'd imagine a kid would usually be quite scared of Guts. Just walks away! Excuse me? Did this kid frighten it so much as it to walk away? <laughs> I don't know why. Again, there's no colour here. I feel like these eyes are very Griffith-like. I don't know. Maybe this is a version of Casca's child. But it's... It's kind of... Mutated by Griffith in a different way, in a more human way than the demon fetus, perhaps. Again, I've, I've still, like, I've got possibilities that maybe are like one percent true and <laughs> nothing else that could be that could have a chance of being true is one percent and that's about it but what the fuck is this just they just face off and it just walks away what the fuck huh what just happened and it turns to its new mum I'm gonna. I felt bad because I I was calling the demon fetus it for a long time, and I'm doing that here again. <laughs> I'm calling it it, but again, I'm not really sure this is a kid. That that makes me feel like it's not a kid. But interestingly, actually, I didn't notice this. It, in this shot here, it doesn't have any. Um, might just be the light. I think it might just be the light. Actually, I was gonna mention it doesn't have any iris. Maybe maybe it's like a possession or something that this kid's doing, or just like sending something. But I feel like again, it might just be the the light actually just shining in the Croc's eyes, perhaps. As again, I'm I'm just totally stumped. Markto, Atik, Gelpa, Gepla, Gedula, there, or I'm. I love this shit. I love this magic stuff, man. It's because in here it really feels magical, real feels special. In a lot of anime I've watched, in a lot of anime I've watched, whenever they do magic and do spells and stuff, they just don't add that gravitas, that, that kind of... They don't make a big deal out of it. It's just like an ordinary bit of animation for the episode or whatever. But that's... With magic, you really got to like the first couple of Harry Potter movies. I feel especially do this well. They really add that kind of special feeling to the the kind of magic feels nostalgic feel. Like as a kid, it feels kind of it does feel magical. That's the thing. It feels grand like this. This is just like crazy. Whereas, like I said, they just whip out spells left, right, in in a lot of anime I've watched and just treat it so casually a lot of the time. Almost every time magic's used, no matter how big or small, you should make like a big moment out of it. They've definitely got it super right here in Berserk. It, like I said, it always feels grand. It always feels big. It's like a big moment. There's a big risk and such to it as well. They just, like I said, they just got it right. <laughs> always got to be so damn flashy. Beautiful. At night it looks like an aurora. It does. It does have that kind of waves. Almost looks a bit like a dress or uh what's that dessert called? Really popular dessert. Um I had it for a second and I, f I forgot. <laughs> looks like that kind of frilly dessert. Everyone. You are alright? Of course we are. For now, at least, this cabin is secure. Oh, yeah, that's something as well. We're almost doing a bit of a, a cabin in the woods type uh, <laughs> deal right here, aren't we? Defending the cabin. Bit of an evil dead type. But they are not like the trolls who have only astral bodies. Though they are wa uh, warped, their bodies are of flesh. The spiritual sensitivity of their astral bodies wrapped 
in the membrane called matter is quite dulled. Oh god, you're losing me. <laughs> you're losing me. But they're not like the trolls who have only astral bodies. Though they are warped, their bodies are of flesh. The spiritual sensitivity of their astral bodies wrapped in a membrane called matter is quite dulled. So they're much more matter and real than astral and that makes sense because they are super normal apart from the fact that they carry and can walk and such. There's just little parts of them that make them a bit different. There is a limit to the efficiency of the bulwark against them. So there's also a limit to how useful the astral world and those powers are to these kind of almost full matter beings. I think this is a pretty good representation here. The beak would you call it a beak? Uh, the mouth. <laughs> it looks like a big old beak. But, um, yeah, the mouth here, that kind of 20% or 10% is like the kind of astral special magical stuff and the rest of it is just like kind of matter and normal kind of crocodile stuff. There is a limit to the efficiency of the bulwark against them. If they continue to advance on, it eventually... In other words, take care of these things before that. That will take too long. These familiars do not possess the willpower to act individually. There is sure to be a nearby spellcaster controlling the mob. If you defeat him, well, unfortunately he's a bit of fog right now. <laughs> How do we defeat that? Everyone starts breathing. <sighs> Just got to breathe him in and fart him out. Process him and farm out. I'm now searching. Puck. Spark. <laughs> and it's actually a normal drawing of Puck there. Just do it quick, Miss Witch. It's feasting, <laughs> it's feasting, and there it pops up again. I love that shot of that earlier with uh, the helmet, the head creeping up. Like Guts is struggling there. Like Guts is struggling. They're all burning. So many of them. Nasty. Fucking out of sea dry, bro. To tell him out. Wait, 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 wait. Still nothing. Follow the flow of odd. Teeth. Okay, guts are still in control. There, behind some rocks on the shore. There actually is a spellcaster? Ah, I see. There sure are. Some spellcasters. Old men. Easily defeated. Quite ironic as well, considering on their, what we've been seeing from their kingdom and then putting heads all over stuff, beheaded heads. 
Let's see, uh, Crocs seem to <laughs> question what they're doing. Oh, oh. <laughs> Off they go. The familiars. What we want? But Guts is still struggling. It'll be interesting to see if a, if a situation like this occurs again and Guts ends up going out of control, but the fight is over. And Guts, what would happen with Guts? Would he then take on Traveling Pie? How would we stop him? Is the big question. A realistic possibility. We saw something similar with him and Casca at the start of this arc. The whole reason Casca's being uh, she was scared and such before, but even more so now she's scared of guts. Okay, if we're gonna beat it, now's the time. Wait, not yet. There he is, the fucking old dude, <laughs> the old fog dude, coming out of their heads. I feel like maybe my idea of breathing him in was probably not a good idea. <laughs> Farting him out. You'd probably take out your intestines and all your bodily fluids and such out your ass with you, with him. Kill you from the inside. He's a Kushan? Bog? Indeed. Oh crap. You'd think that Serpico's actually got a pretty good weapon against Fog, hasn't he? It's pretty well equipped for this, actually. Oh god, what the fuck is this? Everyone, move away from there. Now! What gives? Are there fish walking around this time? Not sure what this is. Got a long neck, big body. Huh. Oh, we do see this thing. Um, I think in the. Oh, that's the end of it. Why was this chapter so liked? Interesting. Um, yeah, we do see this thing, I think, in the kind of initial artwork for the last volume. Go back a fair few chapters quickly. I think this is it. That's it right there, isn't it? Right in the middle. Yeah, it is. Because it's like a giraffe neck, but it's on like an elephant. Like, I know elephants' noses are quite long. Um, this is much longer than that. Again, why was this chapter so light then? Was it this kid stuff? Was it this kid? Was it this moment here? It was definitely the standout moment of this, wasn't it? Fucking kid just uh, crawling up, piss off. <laughs> as well as uh, the Shaka, of course. Um, yeah, we'll read some comments quickly before we finish off. Guts, of course, struggling. Yeah, really cool creature design here, isn't it? Really cool creature design. That almost looks like a bit of a serpentine kind of sea creature itself, just the just the nose. Um, yeah, pretty damn awesome. Uh, yeah, let's read some comments quickly before we finish off for today. <clears throat> yeah this person's on a similar line to me 
He says, I think the kid is the white hawk. The croc monster really said not today after he looked at him. Like I said, I feel like those eyes are pretty reminiscent of Griffith, Griffith's eyes. But it's got as black as you can get hair, it looks like. But again, I'm not sure how that would all work. I'm really not sure how that would all work. But I get more of the vibe of Griffith than Guts from this kid, for sure. What are these people on about? It's Casca and Guts' son. Don't you remember it got corrupted in the Eclipse? Probably got some powers now, same as Griffith's. What are you on about? Excuse me? What are, you, what are these people on about in the comment section? Am I being stupid? Am I being delusional? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> At this point, with so many people saying this, I feel like I'm the one being deluded. But again, their son is the demon fetus, who was eaten by the human behelot and is now a part of Griffith. Huh. Griffith was reborn from the Egg Apostle, who at the time was holding the cursed infant. Rifuck, <laughs> I like that name, must have possessed the baby to gain a physical body. Same reason the baby survived. So I feel like this is maybe half right here, maybe. This is Griffith. Maybe this is actually Griffith. Maybe he's just using a form that the baby could kind of... What it would look like at this age. Maybe that's it. Maybe this is what their kid would look like at this age. And Griffith can manipulate his body to... Because that same infant that it would be is part of him. Maybe he can manipulate his body to look like this kid right now. I'm not sure why he'd be doing this. But Ganishka is... After Griffith and Charlotte right now, maybe this is a kind of decoy or something from him. Um, but maybe maybe they were on Griffith's trail and this is where Griffith's tail, trail led. Maybe that's why they arrived here. Maybe they're not just randomly searching all these places and just came here by accident. No, maybe they actually were led here, potentially, from this kid. Again, I can only really theorise. and uh, There's so much left to explore. Yeah, I would love to see this in colour, and uh, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see a lot of Berserk in colour, honestly. <laughs> well, this is an explanation right here. The same kid this time in human form. I'm not really sure what he's referring to as this time. And that probably they're scared of him because he has stuff to do with Griffith because of sperm and shit. <laughs> sperm and shit. So they are listening to the sending of the fifth god hand or whatever. Seems like no one's really got the right answer here, to be honest with you. A lot of people were saying there's a JoJo reference in a stand somewhere. I'm not really seeing that anywhere here. What are they referring to as a stand? Cuts his armor? But yeah, thank you guys for watching again. Still, still absolutely in the dark about this kid, to be honest with you. Yeah, plenty of theories, plenty of plenty of thoughts on it. But like I said, I still don't feel absolutely correct in anything I've said. 
or anything I've read either. But um, yeah, do let me know what you guys did think about these chapters down in the comment section. But again, this, this is especially interesting from today, isn't it? Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Let me know if you guys have any theories. Obviously, if you've read ahead and you know the story, then uh, no spoilers. <laughs> Leave a like on the video if you guys did like and subscribe to the channel if you do want to keep up to date with these reactions. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what we've got next week, um, which we'll have a little peek at. Which is going to be the Sea Beast Makala, which we just saw, and the Roar of the Sea. So yeah, looking forward to that. See you guys then, and enjoy the rest of your day, guys.